Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Hello, good afternoon. I'm Tom Macias, I'm the publisher of Hola Iowa, a local Latino English and Spanish newspaper. And today, I'm honored to be the guest at uh, this special show for celebrating Cinco de Mayo. And we're here with uh, Chef Steve Hall and two of our young uh, students here at Mosquitin Community College, which is a great partner of Hola Iowa. Please tell me your name. My name is Angelique Ibanez. I'm the president of LULAC. My name is Jennifer Zamora, and I'm the vice president of LULAC. LULAC is the League of United <coughs> Latin American Citizens. And I'm also a proud member of LULAC, and I'm, also, I'm a member in Devonport on Council Number 10. They've been around since 1959, which is 59 years this year. Uh, but you ladies are part of the Mosquitine Collegiate Council, correct? Yes. Tell me more about it. Okay. <laughs> So uh, we started a chapter here at the college and our purpose is pretty much to promote um, secondary education and to have an impact in our Latino community. Which is very exciting because we are actually the third college in the state of Iowa to have a LULAC also. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. And tell me both of you, are you first generation you know, college students? <laughs> yes, yes, we are. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. LULAC, one of our core values is education. And we support, you know, uh, it's going to school, we give out every year about $50,000 worth of scholarships throughout the Quad City area. And Mosquitine is one of the, the towns that fits on that 50 mile radius for a scholarship. Uh, but today we're here to talk about culture, right? About food. What are we going to make today? We are making uh, corn homemade tortillas. Good. And also to fill those tortillas into for a taco, we're going to uh, make an al pastor. Uh, pork filling. Perfect. I'm going to explain a little bit about that. So. Thank you, Chef. Well, we're going to start with, with uh, the two of you teaching us how to make corn Tort tortillas, yeah. which yes. actually most of the people do flour. So I'm pretty impressed that you guys are going to tackle corn. Please yeah. tell us tell us the process. So I decided to do corn because flour to me is a lot like harder. So we're going to start with uh, how to create these little two pieces of plastic that you need to make your tortilla. So you just grab like a regular grocery bag and you're gonna cut two squares. So it's gonna be like a utensil so your tortilla doesn't stick to the presser. Now, where can one find a presser for tortillas? Uh, you can usually, I think Walmart has them sometimes and or any Mexican, um, grocery stores like here in town we have New York and then we also have it Olimito. I believe those work in the fine. Yeah, if you're lucky you might find it at your local garage sale. <laughs> yeah, because that could be kind of pricey, correct? Yeah. 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 Now I'm, I remember, you know, uh, in my family, they have their own tortilla makers and they pass it from generation to generation. How do you guys learn how to make tortillas? I learned them from Jennifer. And I learned how to make tortillas from my suegra, which is my mother-in-law. And, and how, she, how did she go about teaching you? Well, actually, this is a very funny story, at least I think. Um, so we were thinking of an idea of how to raise money. And um, I was throwing out ideas of things that I knew how to make. And Angelica here was like, oh, we should make corn tortillas. So I'm like, okay, let's make corn tortillas. So the day of our practice to make corn tortillas, um, she goes like, Jennifer, you know how to make these, right? <laughs> and I'm like, Angelica, this is your idea. <laughs> you know how to make these? <laughs> and so that's how. And, and your sweater came to the rescue. Yes, because that day when we made them, um, pretty much they looked like tostadas. And stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because my guess was that you wanted her her son to really be well fed. That's the reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, go, go ahead and, and tell me what the, the next step will be once you get your so tortilla you maker ready. Get your little squares. Uh, you're gonna need hot water or warm water, a mixing bowl, um, 
maseca, and a little bit of all-purpose flour. So. In Maseca, you can find at the same places at the Olmito, the Mexican stores in the area, but also Walmart, correct? Yes, of course, Walmart. It's funny, 20, 30 years ago, you couldn't find you know, those, those ingredients at Walmart. And now, they got a whole section with, with uh, a lot of the Mexican products. So, so do you have a specific measurement, or you use no. a tanteo, like yeah, we said? Tanteo. Yeah, tanteo, a tanteo, a little. Everything will be right. and then like. Okay, let me show the camera a little bit, if they can see about how much that is. Can, which camera am I looking at? Right here? Perfect, that's how much. Uh, maseca they used. And, and just about like, um, I don't know, like a handful of flour, not too much. Just a bit, yeah. And this is what makes your tortilla like soft, not like a tostada. Good. Yeah, because we're not making tostadas later, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Now you add the uh, one water. You add the water. And you don't want to add a lot in the beginning. You can kind of just add, I don't know, about what just a cup. Bit, yeah, a cup. And you mix it. That's one thing about tortillas, right? You really need to want, you need to get down and dirty with your hands in the masa. Yeah. And then as you go, will start turning into dough. But I don't add a lot at first because I don't want it to be like too soft. So you just keep adding little by little. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when, when do you realize that is the right <coughs> density? When it doesn't stick to your hand. Oh, that's good. You, you know, I also, uh, from some of my old school family members that make tamales, mm -hmm. and there, there's an old tale that whoever's uh, amasando la masa, mm -hmm. you know, you know, making the dough, that there has to be only one set of hands touching it. You know, otherwise the tamales one not gonna come out all right. <laughs> we, which I, I think that's uh, uh, old folks tale, yeah. <laughs> Because for one person to make tamales, especially when now that they're making it for, for, for like a big party, yeah. Yeah. that would be too much work for one person, yeah. Do you guys uh, uh, make tortillas too, Chef, um, in your class? No, we're, we are going to make them, but in, in a more advanced class. Yeah. Um, we, we're doing baking and there's basically uh, two uh, levels of baking and right now we're doing the fundamentals of baking, but then uh, we do, do also do an advanced baking, and that's when we get into uh, making tortillas. And, you know, th just more uh, diverse, diverse items. Okay. Uh, advanced baking, huh, for tortillas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, for myself, uh, last year, last November, uh, thanks with uh, the help of, Muscat of uh, Eastern Iowa Community College, the School of Culinary Arts. We brought a, a, a chef from Mexico City and she from, from the Guanajuato, for, from uh, Benham of Guanajuato, right. from Mexico. And she taught us how to make not only tortillas, but a lot of the traditional dishes on that area. So we're hoping we can bring her again sometime soon right. because uh, uh, Chef Braska was very impressed with, with all the knowledge that she shared. And yeah. it would be great if she could come here to Muscatine, you know, especially with the community here. And we would love to host her at the yeah. um, factory for sure. Perfect. We would love to make that happen. Now okay, tell so me, do you need to add uh, salt or anything else to no, it? No, uh, the maseca has all the ingredients. Oh, perfect. And so, so this is how you would know that it's done. You'll slap your dough, and if it doesn't stick to your hand, it's good. All right, so that's it, huh? Yep. The dough is done. Yes. Perfect. And now I need to move out of the way, right? We're going to press them. <coughs> I like to use my tortilla press because I'm already used to it. And so you grab a little ball or big ball depending on how big the tortilla 
to also, you have to make sure that your hands are a little bit wet, not too wet, because then, again, uh, your tortilla is not going to come out. But you don't want your hands to completely dry. And you grab your little ball and you just set it in the middle. And you set one of these on top. I want to show that to the camera, how perfect the tortilla came. Yeah. Look how nice a circle it made. Yeah, that's the reason you do it with the presser. Otherwise, it wouldn't come out so well so rounded, round, correct? Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. And so then, you put it on your stove top at high temperature. Just use your hands. Yep. Yeah, that, that's something that when you're young and you're Mexican, you learn pretty early. <laughs> you, you, you don't use a, a fork you know, to, to flip the tortillas. You have to do it by hand. Once you do it by hand, then you're, you're officially a, 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 a master. A master, yeah. Especially when you're doing the stove at the fire, is there? Yeah. Then I like to flip mine, like as soon as it turns into like I don't know, like a yellow brown kind of color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now tell me, I think some of them they get puffed up a little bit. Does yours do that sometimes? Sometimes. Yeah. Be careful <laughs> On a good day. That's, that's very hot. That's the end. That builds up here. Yeah. Tortillas at all? Um, not so often, to be honest. Yeah? Yeah, not right now. <laughs> yeah. but, but when you make them, you make more than two or three, so you have to Correct. make quite a few. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, the way you, you really seem so easy, you know, in a, I wonder why why uh, more people don't, don't do that at our home. Maybe because it's so convenient to just buy the packet mm -hmm. and already done and yeah. just warm it up. But these taste a lot better. And a lot of people warm up the packet on the microwave, but you know that's not really, they're not that good as when you put them up on the commodity, correct? That's mm -hmm. super true. Yeah. And once we get a couple of tortillas done, then uh, Chef Hall is going to tell you about tacos al pastor, which that's going to be the feeling that we're going to be using the, today for the tortillas. Okay. On the meantime, while the tortillas are being made, can you tell me a little bit about LULAC Muscatine Collegiate Council? What are you guys planning on doing? We are uh, planning on having a fundraiser at the brew. Uh, it would be a Loteria fundraiser. June 5th. <clears throat> so and basically we're doing it so we can raise money to send uh, future LULAC members to Washington DC for the annual um, so the, to the annual what's it called? A legislative yes. day. Yeah. Oh that that's that's real nice. Um when is the date again for the loteria? Uh June fifth. June fifth and that's kinda like bingo, right? Yes. A, a fun way of uh is Mexican bingo. <coughs> with uh, images and uh, which are kind of fun. Yes. It is. And I, what are some of the, the images that you remember from Nutria? El borracho. El borracho. <laughs> <laughs> the flower. Yeah, yeah they, they got um, also El Valiente. Uh -huh. the, they got La, la Dama. Sirena. Yeah, those are some of the popular ones. La Rota. Yeah. And, and I know that Lula Council in Iowa City has been doing the Loteria nights for about a couple of years now, and they have a lot of fun. So I'm glad that you're bringing that down to Muscatine. Yeah. And hopefully all, all your members will have a lot of fun participating. And there is prizes too. Oh, nice. Yep, and doors open at 5.30. 5.30. Yep. Do you want to press them? Okay, just put them over. Where do I have the plate with the tortillas? I'll try you for an empty plate. We have another plate, Chef. Oh, we have some more. Oh, perfect. Now, Chef, I think we're going to take you out of the bench. And, right. and, and, and please tell us more about, you know, 
what pastor, type of pastor are. Okay. Um, I had just recently uh, learned about this. Um, you know, um, when you go to almost any restaurant now, one of your choices, uh, the many choices you get for tacos is al pastor. And I'm like, so where did that come from? Because I'm seeing this more and more. And uh, I had worked in Mexico. I had worked in Cancun. And um, didn't really know a lot about al pastor in Cancun. It's become the second most popular, you know, uh, choice now after it carne is. asada, exactly. which carne asada is, is the, you know, cornerstone. But then the, the second uh, most popular choice now is al pastor. Al pastor, and it turns out 150 years ago, um, immigrants came to central Mexico from uh, Lebanon in the Middle East, and um, they brought with them. They were Christian. They were Christian immigrants, so they they raised uh, pigs and they ate pork. Um, so they, they uh, brought their, their cooking style and their culture to central Mexico, near Puebla, mainly. And um, they, they, they did what they knew how to do, and that was to use a trompo, trompo which is uh, like a spit, and they, they uh, sliced their pork really thin, really thin, and they marinated it. I have some ingredients here you can kind of see, where um, they used a, a shote, and um, different uh, guajillo spices and chiles, and uh, usually in the, in the powder form, and they would marinate their, the pork, and they would slice it really thin, marinate it with some onion, garlic, uh, pineapple, lemon, and um, get it loaf together, and then cooked on a spit. And it would slow cook. There would be some char going on, but it wouldn't be like a real aggressive cook. It just be a slow roast. Very similar to the way they do the, uh, the gyros. The right? gyros and shawarma, it's the same concept, except they use pork instead of lamb or, or beef. And There's one ingredient that, which always fascinated me, especially growing up in, in Mexico City, mm -hmm. when you go in yeah. and buy the tacos de trompo. They slice off the, the, the meat for yes. your taco, and then the, the, the chef, very, very masterful, hits the pineapple on top and a piece of pineapple flies away and catches it on the taco. Yeah. yeah. So why we won't do that here, but... I, you know. <laughs> why the pineapple? Yeah. Excuse me? Why the pineapple? Why, why um, do you think they added that to it? It's I, a very contrastic flavor. Yeah, I think somewhere along the line someone got clever and the whole idea just from the Pacific side, from the uh, so many of the islands in the Pacific, where they would use uh, cooked pork and have pineapple with the pork. I think that came from the island. They wanted to add their own idea. Yes. I guess. I yeah. think so. And so that kind of came to it. Um, I was reading today in, uh, in Google, um, uh, a, a guy, he wanted to do this at home. So he went to a Mexican yes. store and he got some uh, fresh sliced meat, already sliced. But he didn't have a trompo to use. So he. Um, used a bucket and he put all this meat, marinated meat, into a bucket and got it loafed up. And he um, took a pineapple and cut it in half and put it on his grill. And he had the coals, charcoals, all the way around the, the, the grill. And then he put his pineapple in the middle and then he put his loaf of pork on the pineapple half and then he put the other half of pineapple on top. So he had top and bottom with the pork in the middle all sitting together, he closed it up and cooked it for like an hour and a half. And then he took it out and then he had the pork and it kind of looks like this, where it's just this thinly sliced, marinated, cooked pork. And then they take it from here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice it up and heat it up. So why don't I show you how we Perfect. do that? Perfect, let's do that. Okay. So I basically am gonna take some of the meat that we have. Um, this but um, it's definitely about the marinating and it's basic uh, a lot of times what they'll do with the meat um, if you do it at home is uh, you can put your meat in a bag with all your seasonings again a shote, guajillo, um, 
Tell me about a chote. What is a chote? A chote uh, is a um, comes from a seed. It comes from a type of seed, and I I think it's anote an anote seed, uh, anote plant, and um, it is basically very uh, very red, almost an orange red. And, With a strong uh, flavor. The strong flavor, but um, it's not uh, spicy. Uh, it's the one um, seasoning that is used a lot that is, that is not very spicy at all. It's, it's colorful. Um, very colorful, colorful and very strong flavor. Kind of like um, it would be in Europe where they use paprika. And paprika is so strong and so um, flavorful, but it doesn't have to be as spicy to be, to be good. And that's what they do. So I just wanted to, this is going to be a little messy and I wanted to get some gloves on. But, um, um, Ashote is being used more and more where ashote, we have used it a lot with chicken. It's very good with chicken. In fact, you, um, there's nothing more wonderful than uh, taking some ashote powder and um, mixing it with some, uh, with some oil and uh, some uh, chopped garlic and uh, taking a fresh chicken, a whole chicken, and just rubbing the whole chicken underneath the skin and on top of the skin with the, with the ashote, yes. It's very good. So we're going to take some of this now. All right. Now we can turn it up a little bit. And this is just to kind of crisp it up. This will go in the top of the wall but and you know, before we talk about how you couldn't find tacos of pastor in a lot of places. Now no. you find it in most of the Mexican restaurants, it's a must. And even you find it in, in some restaurants who are not traditionally Mexican. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, one of my uh, uh, clients, Rio City Casino, for, for May, created a pastor tosta. You know, and I'm like, wow, what's amazing? I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> so I'm probably going to try it this week. But it looks pretty yummy. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's the, I'm so happy that Mexican cuisine is really uh, becoming part of American culture. Oh, yes. And it's very Absolutely. well accepted by uh, 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 anybody. Yeah? Absolutely. Um, it's pretty interesting. Um, uh, one of the, one of the uh, most well-renowned restaurants right now in the world is a restaurant in Copenhagen, Denmark, called um, Noma. And uh, uh, the chef was so infatuated with uh, Mexican cuisine that he opened a, a second Noma restaurant in Tulum, Mexico. Wow. Yeah, so he has a three-star uh, restaurant in Tulum, Mexico now. So he took so Mexican cuisine to, to, to a, a different level. Denmark, yes. And then now he brought it to Mexico. Yes, exactly. You know, that, that's, that's the, the best way to validate that you made something good. Yeah. Yes. In okay. Mexico, I wanted to buy Mexican food from, from somebody from Denmark. <laughs> it must be good. All right. Well, we might as well assemble one here. Is it ready to check? Okay. All right. So... Right. And we'll have a little bit. And then we'll put a little bit. And I'm going to be. Yeah. Some of the sweet. Yeah. Some onions, maybe. Give just me a wedge of lemon. Sure. You should add your slime myself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. You know, it's making my mouth water. Okay. <laughs> Fine, I'm, I'm going to let the ladies from, from Lulek try it first. Okay, okay guys. Yeah. And Helic is going to be our, our, our GDP. Yeah. Which is a past lunchtime, so hopefully we're all hungry. And, and I see the faces of all the audience here, you know, they, they want to be next. Don't worry. Let me make one for them. Sure. Help yourself. Really good when it comes with a homemade tortilla. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Where's the camera? You gotta turn on the camera, that way you can see your face when you, <laughs> <laughs> when you take the first bite. I'll yeah. set my hand here. 
<laughs> we're trying now. No, we want to. We want to see how you like it. Amen. And now, Chip, I'm gonna be the, the next. And you can help yourself with your touch. Okay. Yeah. I'll, 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 what you want? I'll fix it up the way. Okay. Uh, I do like the pineapple. So that's. But you know, t talking about making your own tortillas, um, and how it's like an art that's going away. I think actually. It's something that we're going to see more and more in the restaurant business because uh, people realize that it. And and you know I'll do cooking classes um, and I'll do I'll I'll do cooking demonstrations at like bookstores and people go you know what makes a chef what makes this was asked the other day you know what does it take to be a chef really we're we're all creative we all love food it's number one it's about loving food and enjoying food. Um, Basically, what I do is is no different from what what anyone does as far as creating it. We just do it in a fast-paced environment, and we're doing like six different things at once that all take a different amount of time to make. But we we all enjoy this, and I think that's why we're getting back to that nut and bolt of, you know, prefab food. I think is gone. I think we're going back to just. Authentic you know, to the basics. To and, the basics. And to what really is the best for you? Exactly, and it doesn't have to be real fancy. I agree with you. I, for my job with all Iowa, I travel all over Iowa, and I see most restaurants now that they're doing that precisely what you, you ladies are doing. You know, making a handmade tortilla, mm -hmm. and people would rather pay the, the premium mm -hmm. you know, to have a handmade tortilla. Exactly. So I, I agree with you. I think that's going to be happening more and more. As you can see, it, it wasn't so hard. It didn't take too long for no. for the tortillas no. to be made. And. Uh, well, Chef, I want to I wanna, I wanna give you the, the, the test and I'll let you know how, how good it is. Now, we, where's the camera at? Which one do I need to look at? Nothing. All right, right over there? Well, let's see. Okay. All right. Mm. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's really good, Chef. Well, good. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Is there something more you can tell us about Lulac and, and what, you, what, what are your plans for the long term for, for the Collegiate Council? Well, we graduate in May, but the future plans we want to uh, have to get the, our community here in college to know more about the Hispanic culture like we're planning. Uh, Dia de los Muertos event. We're, in our event that we did last year was La po uh, Posada, uh -huh. which it went great and people got to know more like what it was, and we also had like Mexican bread, and they enjoyed that too. Yeah. A, a, a lot of people, um, especially from a different culture, sometimes they, they feel they see these celebrations and they don't, they don't understand a lot. And sometimes they feel a little bit threatened that it's a, it's a separate celebration. But really, I would like to invite everybody to join, you know, the, a celebration outside of your culture. It don't have to be Mexican culture. Yeah. Try, try different um, communities, you reach out, and you're gonna find out that we got so many more things in common. Just like Tacos a Pastor, that he came all the way from uh, the Love Middle East to, to Mexico, and then to Denver, Denmark, and then back to exactly. Mexico, and everybody's loving it. So I think if you try something different, uh, really you got nothing to lose. If you don't like it, that's fine, you know, but maybe you might love it, so thank you. And Chef, Thank you very much for, for all your knowledge today. Yeah, thank you. And uh, now I, I think uh, the, the rest of the audience is very for some time. Yes. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, ladies. And how can uh, a, a young person that wants to come to Mosquito Community College, how can they be part of you? They can get a hold of Ben, email him, or if they're friends with us, we can get the knowledge and also get it up to Ben. Good. Cool. Well, thank you very much. And uh, anything else you want to add, Chef? No, I don't think so. I no. think this was great. So if somebody taking your classes here will learn how to make this, right? Uh, sooner than later, they sure will. Perfect. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and someone well, that's willing to join LULEC could learn some of this. Perfect. Yeah. And now, thank you. And now we're going to get everybody else to come and get try some tacos. Thank you very much. All right.